Hey everyone, so tonight's gonna be a big video because I'm gonna be walking you through everything you need to know about shooting an interview on a budget. All right, so last but not least, let's walk through the four interview scenarios you might find yourself in and discuss which cameras are gonna suit your needs the best. Now you might already own a camera, um, but if you're looking for another one, these are things to keep in mind. And even if you don't take my advice for which camera to get, keep in mind the things you should, the features you should be looking for in a camera. Okay, so for scenario one, when you're using one camera and you're only filming one subject and you're operating the camera, the camera that I'm gonna recommend is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. And this is the camera I'm using now. This is the camera that I filmed interviews on. And the Blackmagic Pocket 6K for me would be the perfect interview camera that I'd recommend to everyone, except for one reason, which I will get into, but I'm gonna recommend it in this scenario for the following reasons. The image quality that comes out of this camera is the best image you can get on the market for the price at only $2,000. So if you're not someone who's interested in coloring and you don't wanna deal with coloring at all in post, you can shoot with a LUT or a color profile baked in and not have to worry about anything later. But if you're someone who enjoys coloring, adding a specific tone to your work, you just want the ability to shape it later in case there are any errors, this camera shoots in RAW, so you can adjust things like exposure, white balance, color temperature later. You can essentially build the color from the ground up. Now, nothing's gonna fix atrocious lighting, but if you messed up the exposure a little bit or the colors a little bit, you can fix all of that in post when uh, shooting raw. And this is especially helpful if this interview is fitting into a bigger project and you find that you wanna match the interview to the tone of the project, you'll have a lot of flexibility in post. But besides for image quality, there are a few factors that make this camera amazing for interviews. The first one is that you can charge it while recording, like I'm doing now, like I've done in the past for hours on end. With a lot of other cameras, you can find charging solutions, like you can buy third-party chargers for a bit of extra money or create dummy battery solutions, but that requires buying more gear, worrying about a whole other setup. Oftentimes, if you're not someone who knows about voltage like myself, you risk damaging the internal side of your camera by mixing and matching different battery solutions. So it's really convenient. The fact that the Black Magic comes with a charger that you can record unlimited footage with while plugged into a wall. Now you can only shoot quote unquote unlimited footage if you have a lot of storage. And while admittedly the Black Magic does eat up a lot of storage because it shoots 12-bit color and 6K resolution, the Black Magic is special in that it can record straight to an SSD card like the Samsung SSD T5. Now what's great about these cards is they're really quick in processing large amounts of data, and also they come in a pretty high storage range. So they range generally from 500 gigabytes all the way up to four terabytes. So while you're not gonna get unlimited footage, you can pretty safely leave your uh, Blackmagic recording to a one, two, even four terabyte SSD for a long time without worrying about running out of storage. The other thing that's great about the SSD is how much they expedite your workflow. So you can plug it right into the camera, stop recording, unplug it, and then plug it right into your computer. And because it reads large files very well, you can scrub through your footage to check it. Let's say you're taking a break in the middle of the interview and you wanna check on the footage just to make sure it's going a-okay. What you can do is plug the SSD right into your computer and look through the footage. Whereas if you were shooting on something like an SD card, what you'd have to do, take it out of the camera, put it in a card reader or an adapter, then drag it over into a fast hard drive wait for that transfer to finish, and maybe have the ability to scrub through the footage. Oh, by the way, not only does the Black Magic have these great storage solutions and can charge all day while recording, it also has unlimited recording, and I'm only gonna be recommending cameras to you that have unlimited recording because that's pretty crucial for long interviews. Now, the last great thing I'm gonna mention about the Black Magic is that it takes audio feed really well. I work, help out with a podcast and we run a mini XLR into the Black Magic for all the podcasts and the audio sounds 
incredible. It sounds flawless. Right now, I'm running this $40 shotgun microphone into the Blackmagic's other audio port, which is a 3.5 millimeter jack, and it sounds great. Now, the reason I bring this up is because even though you can record audio to a lot of other cameras, a lot of mirrorless cameras really can't interpret or receive the audio in a good way. It will still sound quite bad, and that's why I was saying earlier, you should always check before the interview if that's the case, and if you have to get a separate audio recorder. So the Blackmagic at this point sounds pretty perfect, but why wouldn't I recommend it for all scenarios? Um, and that's for one big reason, and that is because it doesn't have autofocus. Now, generally, I don't care. I like to focus manually when shooting stuff, you know, for artistic purposes. But when you are setting the camera down and you're not able to monitor the camera all the time and you need the camera to follow the moving subject and their eyes, you're going to need really reliable autofocus. Now, the reason I recommend the Blackmagic for our first scenario of interviews is because you'll be behind the camera, able to monitor it, make sure it's in focus and all that stuff, so it won't matter as much. So for the rest of the interview scenarios, I'm gonna be recommending only Sony cameras because they are known to have really reliable autofocus, along with Canons, but Canons, the affordable ones, mostly have a 30 minute recording limit, whereas these Sony ones that I'm recommending don't, and they're quite affordable. Now, I'm gonna recommend very affordable cameras for those scenarios, but before I do, I'll just say that anyone has a budget, the camera, the do-it-all camera that I'd recommend for all of these scenarios is the Sony a7 IV. It's a pretty new camera. Unlike the other ones I'm gonna recommend, it can shoot 10-bit internal color, which means it's gonna have a much more professional, customizable in post image than the other cameras. You can still get great images on the other cameras, but this is just on another level. And it has better, more sophisticated autofocus, and of course benefits from all the other features of other cameras I'm gonna recommend. The main reason you wouldn't wanna get this camera is because it's $2,500, and that's probably a big investment for a lot of people, especially if you wanna get two cameras. But keep that in mind, if you do have the budget, that is the camera I recommend. But moving on to some of the more affordable choices. Let's go to scenario B. We have one camera, but you want yourself and the subject in frame. For this scenario in particular, I would recommend the Sony a7C. And the reason I do is because to my knowledge, this is the cheapest Sony camera you can get that's full frame. So for those of you who are just starting out with the camera stuff, just a little background on full frame. The reason that there are a lot of really high quality affordable cameras out there is because manufacturers are able to make cameras with smaller sensors for less money, but still retain that high quality, but they're what are called crop sensor cameras. So there are generally two popular types of crop sensor cameras. There's APS-C, which crops in roughly 1.5 or 1.6 times. The Blackmagic is APS-C, that's why it could shoot such good quality at such an affordable price, or at least that's part of it. And then there are Micro Four Thirds cameras that crop in two times, which the Blackmagic 4K, which is even cheaper, is a Micro Four Thirds. Now, the, one of the big issues with Micro Four Thirds, especially with interviews, especially if you want a wide angle, is that if you're in a really tight space because you often can't control your shooting location, Micro Four Thirds is gonna crop in two times. So if you are using a really wide angle, that's suddenly gonna become a mid-range angle and you might not be able to fit both subjects in frame comfortably. So I really recommend for scenarios where you know that your shooting style is gonna be a wide angle to get a full frame camera that is gonna give you more space and more options in terms of wide angle lenses. So Sony a7C for scenario B. So let's move on to the next scenario we talked about, which is where you're using two cameras and again, both you and the subject are in frame. And in this scenario, I'm going to again recommend the Sony a7C for one of your cameras because in case you decide to take that option where you use the other camera as the close up and you want a B roll or a second camera as a wide angle lens, that full frame will still give you that flexibility. And then we also have to take expense into account. You know, not everyone can afford two really expensive cameras. 
So for the other camera, I'm gonna recommend the cheapest of the options, still really solid image quality, very famous vlogging camera, which is the Sony ZV-E10. So you have one full frame camera and then you have one really affordable camera that will produce similar if not identical images. Now for the next scenario, we have another setup where we have two cameras, but we don't necessarily need full frame because we now have more flexibility on our side of the court. So I'm gonna recommend for one of these cameras, the Sony ZV-E10. For the other camera, I'm gonna recommend one that is a few hundred dollars more expensive, which is the Sony A6600. Now, if you're on a really tight budget, you can just get two Sony ZV-E10s together. They come out to like 14 or $1,500, whereas this option I'm recommending will come out to more like 2,000. The reason I recommend this is because it's a bit redundant to get two of the same cameras. Of course, it'll be useful, but I assume you have maybe a camera life outside of interviews. And by just having a different type of camera, it'll give you the flexibility to do other sorts of work. Let's say, for example, you want to do handheld stuff, right? You're interviewing people on the street and you want to do handheld. The Sony A6600 compared to the Sony ZV-E10 has a much better image stabilization because it has in-body image stabilization, whereas the ZV-E10 has a lesser form of IS, which is digital image stabilization, kind of working with the lens, not actually stabilizing with like mini gyro gimbals inside the body, however all that stuff works. So anyway, those are my camera recommendations. Last but not least, you can't forget about lenses. Without getting too much into it, the lens, the main lens I would recommend is a 50 millimeter. It's the perfect focal length for interviews. It's not too wide where the subject is looking distorted in a way, but it's not too long of a focal length where you're trying to make them look like a photo shoot or a model. It's just that perfect middle ground where you're tight, but you can see the environment they're in the background. They look flattering, they look dramatic, but they also look down to earth. Obviously, if you are shooting in those scenarios where you need a really wide angle lens, I'd recommend a 24 millimeter lens. These two lenses together are cheaper than the average single lens and also smaller than the average single lens. So it's ideal for traveling. You can bring them wherever you go. Anyway, I'm rambling. We could go on and on about this. If you have a shoot tomorrow or whenever it is, whenever you wanna jump into these interview sessions. I really hope this helped you. I really hope this helped all of you out there. I made this video because I am not a complete expert on interviews. It's something I'm dabbling with, but as I go along, I learn this stuff and I see that really anyone can do it. If you know the steps and you put your mind to it. So I hope all of you go out and get great interview footage and please share it with me.